Welcome to the Investing Iguana. I'm your host Iggy. Today, we're going to delve into the fascinating world of stock trading, specifically focusing on the best times to trade. This is particularly relevant for our Singaporean audience, given the unique dynamics of the Singapore Stock Exchange, SGX. So, buckle up and let's get started. Trading stocks is not just about picking the right stocks, but also about timing your trades correctly. Unlike long-term investing where you buy and hold a stock for gradual appreciation, trading often involves buying a stock for a quick turnaround within a set time period. This could be a few days, a week, a month, or even a quarter. Day trading, as the name suggests, involves making trades within a single day. The time of day when a trade is made can significantly impact the outcome of the trade. So, is there an ideal day or time to buy or sell stocks? Let's find out. As the sun rises in Singapore, the stock market awakens with a flurry of activity. The opening hours are a time of wild swings in market volumes and prices as the market digests all the events and news releases since the previous closing bell. This period of volatility can be a double-edged sword. For the skilled trader, it presents an opportunity to recognize patterns and make a quick profit. However, for the less experienced, it could lead to serious losses. If you're new to trading, you might want to steer clear of these turbulent hours or at least tread lightly during the first hour. For seasoned day traders, however, the first 15 minutes following the opening bell is akin to striking gold. This is usually when some of the day's biggest trades occur on initial trends. The period from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, ET, is often considered one of the best hours for day trading. It offers the biggest moves in the shortest amount of time. Many professional day traders wrap up their trading around 11.30 a.m. as this is when volatility and volume start to decrease. Once this happens, trades take longer to execute and moves are smaller due to less volume. If you're trading index futures such as S and AMP wink with tongue sticking out 500 E-minis or an actively traded index ETF like the S and AMP wink with tongue sticking out 500 SPDR SPY, you can start as early as 8.30 a.m. pre-market and begin tapering off around 10.30 a.m. The middle of the day is often likened to the eye of the storm, calm and stable. During this time, traders are waiting for further news to be announced. As most of the day's news releases have already been factored into stock prices, many are watching to see where the market may be heading for the remainder of the day. The last hours of trading see a resurgence in volatility and volume. In fact, common intraday stock market patterns show that the last hour can mirror the first sharp reversals and big moves can occur, especially in the last several minutes of trading. From 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, day traders are often trying to close out their positions or join a late-day rally in hopes that momentum will carry forward into the next trading day. There's a long-standing belief in trading circles about certain days offering systematically better returns than others. However, over the long run, there's very little evidence to support such a market-wide effect. One such belief is the Monday effect or weekend effect. Anecdotally, Traders have observed that the stock market tends to drop on Mondays. Some attribute this to a significant amount of bad news often being released over the weekend. Others believe it's due to investors' gloomy mood at having to return to work, which is especially evident during the early hours of Monday trading. However, the Monday effect has largely disappeared in recent years. For instance, while Mondays on average marked negative returns for the S and AMP wink with tongue sticking out 500 in 2018, the effect was very small. Nevertheless, if you're planning on buying stocks, perhaps you're better off doing it on a Monday than any other day of the week. You might just end up snapping some bargains in the process. Remember, every trading strategy has its own risks and rewards, and it's crucial to do your own research and understand market trends before making any investment decisions. If you're looking to sell stocks, you might want to consider doing so on a Friday. According to Investopedia, if Monday is the best day of the week to buy stocks, then Friday may be the best day to sell them. This is because stock prices tend to dip on Mondays, so selling on a Friday before the dip can be a smart move. 
If you are interested in short selling, then Friday may be the best day to take a short position if stocks are priced higher on Friday, and Monday would be the best day to cover your short. In Singapore, there is no hard and fast rule for the best day of the week to sell stocks. However, it's worth noting that the first hour and last hour of a trading day are usually the busiest, offering the most opportunities. The opening hours are when the market factors in all of the events and news releases since the previous closing bell, which contributes to price volatility. A skilled trader may be able to recognize the appropriate patterns and make a quick profit, but a less skilled trader could suffer serious losses as a result. So if you're a novice, you may want to avoid trading during these volatile hours, or at least within the first hour. It's also worth noting that stocks tend to climb towards the end of the month and fall in the middle of the month. So, in our opinion, the best time of the month to buy shares is probably somewhere in the middle, say between the 10th and 15th, while the best time to sell is within a few days of the end of the month. Please note that these are general trends and not guarantees. It's important to do your own research and analysis before making any investment decisions. If you're looking to invest in stocks in Singapore, you might want to consider the end of December. According to experts, the end of December is a good time to buy small caps or value stocks. This is because many investors start to sell stocks en masse at year's end to claim capital losses on their tax returns. As a result, the last trading days of the year can offer some bargains. In addition, the Singapore stock market tends to have strong returns around the turn of the year, as well as during the summer months. This is known as the January effect, where investors return to equity markets with a vengeance at the beginning of a new year, pushing up prices, especially of small cap and value stocks. Of course, there is no guarantee that the stock market will perform well at any given time. However, if you're looking for seasonality trends, you may want to consider buying small caps or value stocks at the end of December and be poised for a rise early in the next month. Here are some tips for buying stocks in Singapore at the end of December. A. Do your research and identify a few small cap or value stocks that you're interested in. B. Set aside some money that you can invest in these stocks. C. Place your orders in the last few trading days of the year, when the markets are typically less active. D. Be prepared to hold your stocks for the long term, as it may take some time for them to appreciate in value. Singaporean investors who are considering selling stocks may want to consider doing so in September or October. These two months have historically been weak for the stock market, with September averaging the worst monthly return of the calendar year. Institutional investors may also sell stocks in September to rebalance their portfolios or lock in profits at the end of the third quarter. Additionally, many of the worst market crashes have occurred in October, which is why some investors refer to this month as the October effect. While there is no guarantee that the stock market will decline in September or October, investors may want to consider selling in these months to take advantage of historically weak returns and avoid the volatility of October. In the bustling financial hub of Singapore, there's a rhythm to the stock market that savvy investors have come to recognize. While there's no magic day each month that guarantees success, certain trends do emerge over time. As the new month dawns, a fresh influx of capital typically flows into mutual funds. This periodic injection of funds tends to give stocks a boost, making the turn of the month a potentially profitable time for investors. Quarterly balance sheets also play a role in this financial dance. Fund managers often spruce up their portfolios at the end of each quarter by acquiring stocks that have performed well. This can lead to a surge in stock prices. However, it's not all about the highs. Stock prices often dip in the middle of the month, providing a potential buying opportunity for traders. The sweet spot for purchases might be around the 10th to the 15th of each month. As for when to sell, the five-day window around the turn of the month could be your best bet. So, whether you're a seasoned trader or a newbie in the Singaporean market, understanding these patterns could give you an edge in your investment journey. In the world of stocks, there's a long-standing belief that certain days or months can bring fortune or failure. These market anomalies, as they're known, have been a thorn in the side of efficient market theories for years. 
Historically, these anomalies suggested that the stock market had its own rhythm, its own ebb and flow that could be predicted and profited from. However, as these patterns became more widely recognized and trading became increasingly automated, they began to fade into the background. Today, in the fast-paced financial hub of Singapore, the question remains, do these best times to buy or sell stocks still exist? Or have they vanished into the ether of high-speed trading algorithms and global market forces? The answer is in clear-cut. While some investors swear by these patterns, others see them as relics of a bygone era. What's certain is that in the ever-evolving dance of the stock market, staying on your toes is always a good strategy. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. It really helps us to understand what kind of content you want to see more of. And don't forget to subscribe. Here at The Investing Iguana, we're dedicated to helping you navigate your financial journey with confidence and clarity. And guess what? There's plenty more where this came from. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos where we'll tackle other interesting financial topics like the best investment strategies, understanding the stock market, and how to make your money work harder for you. As always, we're thrilled to have you as part of our Investing Iguana community. Your support helps us keep producing free content like this. Remember, every like, share, and subscribe goes a long way. Thanks for joining us today. Keep investing, keep growing, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.